Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Jessica, AKA Soul Tribe Mama. This is my channel, of course. <laughs> welcome if you are new and welcome back if you are already subscribed and a part of this Soul Tribe Mama family. I love you guys so much and thank you for supporting this channel um, and everything that I do over here. It really makes me so happy when I see y'all's comments and I get to live through you now that you guys are pregnant or having your babies and living with a newborn and my newborn baby is not a newborn baby anymore. <laughs> he is gonna be nine months old soon and I cannot believe it's already been nine months y'all like this has gone by so so fast I don't know how this happened but I have a what to pack in your hospital bag video already on my channel now when I made that video we were smack dab in the middle of COVID and lockdowns and all of that stuff so that video had a lot of things that I had put on my checklist and that I had packed for myself for baby boy and for labor and everything to go to a hospital because they had told us that once we get there, we can't leave. So if I thought we got there and we had forgotten something, too bad, <laughs> pretty much. My husband wasn't able to leave and go get it from home and come back. That wasn't gonna be the deal. So when I made that video, there are a lot of things on there that you probably don't need or wouldn't need or didn't end up using. And some of the things I didn't end up using, but I wanted to bring them anyways, just to be safe, just to make sure I had everything that I might need or might wanna use. I had a few comments on there saying, whoa, this is way too much stuff. You don't need all this, which can be true. There are some things on there that were more personal to me. Um, things that I really wanted to do this time around the fourth time around but again yes it was quite a bit of things and mainly because I didn't want to forget anything I didn't want to be there and then go oh my gosh I wish I would have brought this and now my husband can't leave to go get it from the house I'm stuck here without it so just to say that if you want to be super extra prepared that video would be great for you even now even though we aren't in lockdown and all of that but this video is going to be more for a minimalist mama if you are a mama that likes to pack minimal doesn't want to bring a whole lot of stuff just wants the stuff that you know you're going to use and that's it then this video is for you this is also going to kind of be a what i actually used in my hospital bag video so kind of both of those but so just so y'all know if you want to watch my other hospital video it will be linked down below in the description if you want to check that one out but if you are just looking for the must-haves the minimalist hospital bag then this is the video for you again y'all before i start this video these are all my opinion. These are all things that I would choose. That doesn't mean that everything that I put on this list is gonna be everything that you may want or may work for you, just so that we know. I am not, you know, this big expert. Yes, I've had four kids. That still doesn't make me an expert because everybody is different. We all like different things. Again, another thing before we get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you love pregnancy and postpartum and motherhood content because I have a ton of it over here. And if you like these kinds of videos, that lets me know that these are the kinds that I should keep making for you. So if you give this video a big thumbs up, that will really help me out. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. I would love to have you a part of this Soul Tribe Mama family. It has been growing and growing and I am so grateful for all of you guys that watch my channel and support it and send me all the love. I love you guys too. So I would love for you to become a part of this family. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're starting this video off with baby and the things that you need for your new baby coming into this world. Now, usually <laughs> mama is really the one that needs the most. Baby, you don't really need to bring a whole lot for them, especially because if you're delivering in a hospital, they pretty much already have everything ready for you. And another thing in this video, I don't have everything sitting around me. I'm not gonna have all this stuff and hold it up in the camera to show you like I did in my last video, but I will put in little pictures throughout this video of all the different items so you can see. You can see them. I'm a visual person. I like to see the visuals so if you were like that I will definitely put some visuals up here for you guys when I talk about these products so you can see what they look like um, and of course everything that I talk about in this video will be linked down below in the description box for you guys if you need it um, a lot of things come from Amazon which is great so if you're an Amazon Prime member this will definitely help you out if you're trying to get your last minute hospital bag put together so number one which is pretty much the most fun one is your coming home outfit the outfit that you want your baby to leave the hospital in and bring them home to announce it to the world um, to bring that baby home to other family members to see or maybe their siblings to see just that cute outfit that you're going to be taking pictures of your baby in 
And it could be more than, you know, two or three items. It may be a hat, it may be a bow, it may be a wrap, it may be a romper, it may be the blanket with the hat, you know, like all of those different things. Just make sure that you have that picked out and that you pack that in your bag. For me, I feel like, I feel like every mom is like this. That was probably the number one thing I packed in my bag just because it's so exciting. Um, just to think about your baby being in this outfit like super soon. It's not gonna be in your belly anymore. It's gonna be in your hands in this cute little outfit. <laughs> so definitely have that picked out. And I'm not gonna give y'all examples. I will show you what I put baby boy in, but I'm not gonna give you examples just because everybody's different between boy and girl and the things that people like is different. Some people just want the swaddle with the hat, um, you know, something embroidered with their name on it. Maybe you just do like a footed romper. Um, or a two-piece set, you know, who knows? So that's up to you to figure out. The only thing that I will say, since it is the going home outfit, you're gonna have to put baby in the car seat on your way home, so don't make it something that's like wrapped at the bottom of their feet, because when you go to put them in the car seat, you have to put all those straps in between their legs and stuff, and so then you have to unwrap it, and it can be a hassle. So definitely try to find something that's either got uh, pants or a romper that has, you know, a zipper or something like that. It's probably gonna be easier for you to be able to get baby in and out of their car seat. Okay, the next item for baby is going to be a footed romper or a onesie. Now, the reason I put one or two, you could totally take both if you want to, if you're just not sure which one you're gonna use or which one is gonna be easier for you. If you use just the onesie, whether it's short sleeve or long sleeve and it buttons down by the diaper you're probably gonna be swaddling your baby a whole lot while they're in the hospital with you. So you don't really need something to cover their full length of their body just yet, just because it's gonna be covered up in a blanket and you may not want them to get overheated. Most of the hospital rooms are gonna be on the cooler side. They're not gonna be super hot in there. So you will, your baby shouldn't get overheated, but if you don't wanna do any extra zippers or buttons with a long footed romper, a onesie is a great choice. The only thing I don't like about having just a onesie that has to go over their head is that when they're newborns they like to be like this and trying to get that thing over their head and their arms pulled through it can be a little challenging and you will not believe how strong newborns are until you try to do that like they are incredibly strong to try to get their arm through a armhole so that is one of the reasons why I do love the footed rompers especially in the newborn to three months old stage and of course the zipper ones are great because you don't have to do a bunch of buttons. You put their feet in, you try to get their arms through it, and then you zip it right up. And Kite Baby has some really, really soft ones, and they have the double zipper, which means that it zips from the bottom up as well. So you can do diaper changes without having to take the whole thing down off of their chest. It keeps their chest and their arms nice and warm, and then you can just pull their legs out, do your diaper change, put their legs back in, and then zip it right back down. So those are great to have. But again, that's your choice. Do you wanna bring just the onesie? Do you want to bring the footed romper I would only bring one of each if you are gonna do both or just pick one whether or not they're wearing clothing they are gonna be swaddled so either way your baby is gonna be covered it's not like if you don't bring any clothes for them for them they're just gonna be sitting out there naked with just their diaper on that's not the <laughs> they definitely won't be doing that other than when you're changing them so they're pretty much gonna be swaddled most of the time so you don't have to worry about bringing too many pieces of clothing just pick one from those two and then obviously your going home outfit. The hospital that I go to, I have had all four of my babies at the same hospital. They always have clothing for baby. And usually it's just like a plain white onesie, short sleeve onesie, or it's like these long sleeve t-shirts or long sleeve shirts. They're just all white cotton and they're pretty stretchy. And you, they slip them over baby's head, they put their arms through and it's just a little shirt. It doesn't get buttoned down at the bottom, which usually again makes it easier for them to do diaper changes and all of that without having to disrupt anything up here. So again, you could totally use those things. I don't know if every hospital offers that, but I do know that our hospital here in Texas does. That is also an option. If you really don't wanna bring that many clothes for baby, you know they're probably gonna have something there. And the other thing is, is most hospitals are going to have like a baby store right next to the uh, labor and delivery area and mainly because you know you have people come to, to see the baby grandparents and family and friends and they may want to grab something for the baby as a gift or something for mama and they can go into that gift store <laughs> that's all about babies and mommy items and pick a pick something out so let's say you get there you brought your clothes and your baby is almost 
too small to wear newborn size and really needs like a preemie size, they will have them at that store. So you can go in there, you can grab one for right now for the stay at the hospital or coming home. Or maybe let's say your baby is just a bigger baby and you only brought newborn and they're, on, they're not gonna be able to fit in it, it's too tight. And you wanna get them something a little bit bigger to wear while they're in the hospital. You can grab that too. So at least in that area, you do have a couple options. You don't have to freak out if you don't have exactly what you need right then and there. Now talking about swaddling all the time, they will be getting swaddled by the nurses from the hospital blankets that they give you or hospital swaddle blankets that, you, that they give you, which I love those blankets, but I do not like them for swaddling. That is my preference. I am not a fan of just just the way they, it's just, I don't know, to me it feels like so restricting. It's just really thick. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just thick to me. And if you guys can hear a baby screaming in the background, that is my son Knox. He has learned how to use his voice now. He's like listening and hearing his own voice and learning how to scream. And he's literally sitting there playing with his toys and screaming at the top of his lungs. There is nothing wrong with him. He's not upset. <laughs> he's just excited and happy and wants to play. And he's listening to himself be really loud. So we try our best to try to keep him occupied so he doesn't do that, but it doesn't. He just is obsessed with his own voice. So I promise nothing's wrong with him. He just loves to scream. Going back to swaddling, I bring my own swaddle blankets to swaddle my baby in. I love the hospital blankets for like towels. Um, they absorb really well. They're really thick. They're very, very warm or even just to lay underneath baby if you need to change them and you don't, you know, you want to make sure that nothing gets on the bed or your other blanket or your other swaddles. So those are great. And I do recommend taking as many as you can. Whatever they put in that room, in the hospital room is pretty much up for grabs for you. They will let you know if there's something in there that you can't take, but pretty much anything that has to do for baby, like diapers, wipes, clothing, blankets, um, the nose sucker thing, any of that stuff is free for you. So if they have a drawer in there and they put six swaddle blankets in there for you, you just take all of those home. You will not get in trouble, I promise. If you feel uncomfortable doing it, just ask the nurses, you know, can I take these with me? They'll probably say yes. So I love keeping those. I have like at least 20 of them at home and we use those for bath time. They are great for bath time. I put one down on the bathtub, I wrap baby up in another one and then I put him in the bathtub that way so that it gets him used to the water and then I slowly open it, you know, clean him up and then I use another one as a towel to wipe him down, you know, swaddle him up in that to keep him warm and get him dry. So they are great for that. Always, always try to keep one of those with you at all times. They're like an all-in-one kind of blanket, so those are great to keep, but I just don't like the way they feel and I don't like swaddling my baby with them. So I always brought my own swaddles and I brought two. I would bring a muslin swaddle blanket and then I would bring like a stretchy jersey knit swaddle blanket. Again, both of the ones that we have will be linked down below. The muslin one, I don't think they make the pattern anymore that I have. It's like a retro car, it's very neutral, um, but that same company has a ton to choose from, different colors and different patterns that you can choose from. So I'm sure you could find one that you love. But both of those, I've swaddled my baby in both of them and I like them both pretty much the same. If I were to only choose one, it would definitely be the jersey knit because of the stretchiness. So it makes it easy to really get that stretched over baby. That makes them feel really secure and comforted. So between the two, I would pick the jersey knit over any of them if you only wanna bring one swaddle blanket. Um, definitely the jersey knit one. Uh, the one we have is from Copper Pearl and I love it. I got it off Amazon. I love the color. So again, y'all, that's your preference, whether you wanna bring just the one or two. Again, the only other reason I like to bring two is just if while you're there, one of them ends up getting pooped on by accident or peed on, and of course you can't wash it there, you have to put it in a bag to bring home and you wanna have another one ready to go, then you have your second one ready to go. So it's just up to you. All right, the next thing I would bring for baby is a beanie. Your baby's head needs to be covered when after they come into this world, they lose all their heat, their body heat out of their head. And you will notice when you get your baby from the nurses, after they've uh, been born, they will probably immediately put a little beanie, a knitted beanie over their head to make sure that the, it, they regulate their temperature that way. The newborn be beanies there are so cute. I keep every single one that they put on my baby's head just for a keepsake. But after 
you know, after the first couple hours of finally having baby, you're starting to breastfeed and you're calming down and then you know you're going to get a, a shower soon and baby's going to get a bath soon. Everything's going to get cleaned up. That's when I bring out my own beanies. Now I have a few options for you guys. I would bring two again because you never know if one gets dirty or maybe one is a little too tight on them or maybe too big on them. You have a second one as a backup. Again, that's your preference, whether you want to bring one or two. Now the one that I love the most is this knitted beanie from Izzy Mateo. She's on Etsy. It said hello world on it and it's in a perfect neutral color. The hello world patch is a little leather patch and it is so cute and I used it for him throughout the time that we were at the hospital but then I also used that as part of his going home outfit and his newborn pictures. That one for sure is like my number one choice if you were only gonna bring one. I totally recommend that. Number two is gonna be the Little Bipsy beanie because I love the color, it's rust. But it's a more traditional beanie. It's got a lot of stretch to it. It's a little bit thicker so it's definitely gonna be great if it's more of like fall and winter time that you're having your baby and it's a little bit cooler so that one is great if you want a thinner version because it's summertime and even though that doesn't mean that your room is going to be hot but just because it may be a little bit more humid where you live or something like that and you want just a thinner version something that's going to cover his or her head and ears but not overheat them then i would go with the i think it came in yeah the four pack that i got from amazon these are great it's kind of like that jersey knit material real stretchy really smooth material and the one that I got came in gray black white and then a black and white striped one and I love that because it came in options and it's a great price for those again real stretchy they come in sizes so you can choose you know newborn or zero to three month I think I got the zero to three month because you never know how tight or tiny it's going to be and of course you don't know how big your baby's going to be so at least with the zero to three month I know if it's a little too big he'll grow into it and I'll get a little bit more use out of it so I definitely recommend that as well and again you get more options for colors those three are my favorites for sure I think I brought all of them just because I wasn't sure I didn't bring all four of the Amazon I think I picked like the black and the white one to bring with me and then I brought the little Bipsy one and the hello world one and I kind of just rotated those out while I was there and another reason for that is if you give a vaginal birth you will be there anywhere between two days to three days. If you have a C-section, you could be there up until four or five days. Five is kind of pushing it, but I have heard of friends that that has happened and only because maybe it takes you longer to recover. You know, something could have happened to your stitches. I don't know. Any of that kind of stuff can happen. So you always have to be prepared for staying longer in the hospital. Now, if you end up only being there for like a day and a half, then that is great. I actually love being in the hospital. So I was always down to stay for like two or three days <laughs> mainly because that's the only time you're gonna get catered to you know hand over foot for <laughs> those two or three days before you have to come home and everything is on you <laughs> you're doing everything for baby you're sleeping you're trying to get catch up on sleep you're breastfeeding you're healing everywhere and just it's a lot so those are the times that you that's like the only time that you will get of your baby's life where somebody else is actually catering to you they're bringing you you food they're cooking your food i mean you press a button if you need anything so i loved being in the hospital and especially when the nights that my husband had to go home to be with the other kids i love that even more and not that my husband did anything wrong it was just nice to just be me and baby quiet just me and my baby and just to relax and have our own little time together so i am always down to stay in the hospital longer if they allow that <laughs> but just so you know you may be there longer than you think and you want to have these things ready and available and not be like well dang it I only brought stuff for one day and now I'm gonna be here for two or three days so just be prepared okay next thing I brought for baby was a passy and a passy clip now my babies didn't all take passies and I didn't really want my kids to take passies but after my second baby, the nurse had given him a passy because he was really fussy and I noticed how much it helped him. So ever since my second, I've always had a passy on hand just in case we needed it, whether it was to soothe, whether they just wanted to chew on it as I got older. And I didn't overstress about, oh gosh, I don't want them to get obsessed over this and only want the passy or have like nipple confusion between a passy and breastfeeding, which I have never had that problem, thank goodness, but I have heard other moms that have had that problem. So I cannot talk about that too much because I don't know how that goes But I do know that the only time I use the passy 
was after I'd breastfed, after I'd, you know, diaper changed and all those things, and I was trying to get my baby to fall asleep, and it just seemed like they needed something to soothe themselves. I've also heard that it is really good for babies to suck on a passy when they're sleeping because it helps to prevent SIDS just from them totally going so deep into sleep that they can't wake up. If you ever watch a newborn sleep without a passy, you will notice that while they're sleeping, their mouth starts doing that movement like they're sucking on a nipple. And that's pretty much what you're doing is you're just giving them that thing for them to suck on while they're sleeping and it's comfort for them and it helps soothe themselves. So I do always bring a passy and a clip. You don't really need to have the clip if you don't want to, because again, your baby's not gonna be moving around by themselves to where that passy is gonna just flop out everywhere and like fall on the floor or something. But it is nice to have, cause I would clip it to like the swaddle if I was holding him. In that case, if he ever did spit it out of his mouth while he, when he fell asleep, it would just hang off of my arm and you know, it didn't go flying off onto the floor from the bed. So it is nice to have. You don't really have to have it if you don't want to, that's totally fine. But I definitely recommend getting at least one passy with you. And again, you're never gonna know which kind of passy your baby's gonna like. My kids have always liked the Ryan and Rose passies, but like Mushy has one. Um, I mean, there's so many different brands that have passies to choose from and the hospital will have some on hand too. If, if you forget your passy, don't worry because they will have a passy to bring to give to your baby if you ask for it. I don't think they give them to your baby immediately. Um, you as the mom would have to say like, hey, you know, do you have a passy? Can I try it with my baby? And they'll bring you one. Again, you may not use it at all while you're in the hospital. And then you may have a baby that you use it the whole time that you're there. So you just never know. Um, like I said, we use the Ryan and Rose, so I will have those linked down below. And they do come in stages and they do come with different nipples. Some have like a flat nipple, some are just like the normal, I say normal because it's the only one I've ever seen for so long until I started seeing these different ones. But Mushy, I will link that one down too, uh, down below too, because I've had a lot of people say that that one their kid loved as well. So both of those are great choices to try out and you could get both and bring both if you want to as well, just cause you never know if <laughs> one's gonna be better than the other. I definitely would bring that. And that is pretty much it for baby. And the reason why I'm not talking about diapers or wipes is because literally the hospital has plenty for you to use. Plenty of wipes, plenty of diapers. My hospital always had the Pampers sensitive wipes and then the Pampers or the Huggies diapers. Those are the only thing that they would always have, but they would have it filled up in the cabinets of the room for you to use. And if you ran out, they would bring more. And then when you go to leave, they hand you more and say, here you go, take some more, you're gonna need it. So I don't bring any kinds of stuff like that. Okay, now moving on to mama. <laughs> so. For mama, the first thing I would bring for me, kind of like with baby, is my going home outfit. What am I gonna wanna wear that last day when we're getting ready to get in the car and come home? Something that's comfortable, you know, maybe you know you're gonna take a picture with you and your hubby with the baby before you leave the hospital, so you might wanna be in something that you know you wanna be in a picture. You know, maybe you don't wanna be in your PJs, but you wanna be in something comfortable and cute. So figure out what that could be for you. For me, it's always been leggings. I like postpartum leggings. They make me feel secure and everything seems to be like just staying together. The postpartum leggings that I use have always been either the Blanqui postpartum leggings or these $20 postpartum leggings I found on Amazon, which actually ended up being amazing. Of all the ones that I've tried, those two are my favorite. So I would bring those as their postpartum leggings or postpartum shorts depending on the weather. So if it's summertime, I would probably bring the shorts just cause I don't wanna be overheating in the car on the way home. Or if it's more of like fall or winter, I would bring the leggings. With baby boy, he was born in September. So it was definitely a cooler time to have a baby. So I definitely opted for the leggings. And then I like to wear sweatshirts. As you can tell, I'm wearing a sweatshirt now. This is like my favorite thing ever. My most comfortable thing ever to wear. So I brought myself a sweatshirt that said made to mother and my leggings and then my slippers to wear home. That was my going home outfit. Now again, you could wear whatever you want. You wanna wear a dress, wear a dress. You wanna wear shorts and a tank top. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. You wanna wear a robe home, you could wear a robe home. It doesn't matter what it is. The other thing would be, if it wasn't a sweatshirt, it would be a cardigan. I would wear like a tank top and then my cardigan over it. So that would be another option if you're not a sweatshirt kind of person. Again, if you wear a cardigan and you know you might need to breastfeed, that's a lot easier 
to get to if you're wearing a cardigan. If you're wearing a sweatshirt, you know you have to like pull it up. Next is gonna be slippers or socks that have little grippies on the bottom. I am not really a sock girl. I don't like to wear socks very often, so I, I definitely went for more of the slipper route. I didn't bring any shoes at all. I literally wore my slippers to the hospital and then I had them there for me you know, to go anywhere, um, walk in and out of the bathroom, whatever I had to do, and then wore them home. So that is the only shoes I brought. And I actually ended up not taking a shower this last time, which is very weird. And I think just because we were there for the least amount of time that I've ever been at the hospital. But with my first three, I took a shower the next day. And especially when you're feeling, <laughs> I mean, you just gave birth, you're feeling kind of crappy and um, they lay a towel on the bench in the shower and you just sit on that towel on the bench and you just take that hose and just spray yourself and just chill out for a minute and it feels so good to get cleaned off and to wash your hair maybe wash your face i am not the kind of person that wears sandals in the shower at the hospital because to me of all places the hospital is the most the cleanest place to take a shower they have to clean their rooms and their showers and their bathrooms so much and they use bleach and you know anything that you could think of to kill the bacteria that's like the probably the cleanest place so i feel very comfortable walking in there barefoot i don't have any problems with that but that's okay if you are not like that that's okay so i would recommend and uh, with your slippers or your socks bring you know some shower sandals that you know you can get wet and that you can walk into the bathroom with and take a shower with that would be good if you're not like that then and you're like me all I brought was slippers. Next thing is gonna be your Freedom Mom underwear. Of all of the postpartum underwear that you could possibly get, I know a lot of people buy like Depends and stuff like that. I absolutely loved the Freedom Mom underwear. They were the most comfortable underwear to wear and they just, they fit great, they feel so good and you can still put your pads on and everything and still feel like everything is being held onto your body. Nothing's gonna fall off the sides or anything like that. I love them. You can totally buy the postpartum Freedom Mom kit, and which I, I did. The only thing I took out of that kit to bring to the hospital was the underwear because everything else that's in there, they give you at the hospital. And then I kept my kit in my bathroom. So when I got home, then I had all that extra stuff to use at home instead of using it up in the hospital just because you don't know how long you're going to be bleeding it may only be a couple days it may be a few weeks and i have had that happen before <laughs> i've had it happen to where i bled like way too much for too long and then really my last one i i probably bled like i don't know two days <laughs> and then it was over with so you never know but of all things that freedom mom underwear is amazing i didn't wear any underwear when i got to the hospital all i did was put on my uh leggings I wore no underwear under my leggings because I knew that once they took me into triage, they were gonna have me take my pants off. So I just took those leggings off. All I had on was a sports bra. And then when they wheeled me into delivery, I put my robe on. Really the whole time you're there, you're not gonna wear underwear other than like the mesh undies that they give you or if you bring your own. And I brought those Freedom Mom underwears and I'm telling you, <clears throat> the best, <laughs> the best thing I ever wore. Like I love those so much. I wish I had them with my first three. Um, deliveries they were amazing so I definitely recommend those they're they're just top-notch for after delivery next is going to be nursing bras for mama you're gonna need your nursing bras you know making it easy to get to the boob now if you're not you know already that you're not gonna breastfeed that you're gonna have your baby and immediately they're gonna take formula then obviously make sure that you have those little formula bottles with you in your uh, bag so that they're ready to go for baby and then of course you don't really need a nursing bra but I would say bring sports bras something that's just really comfortable not too restricting on you but if you are gonna breastfeed then definitely bring some nursing bras and there are a few different kinds but I will tell you guys my favorites the ones that I have always ended up going towards I've tried a lot of them even with my my last baby I tried a different kind of bra and it ended up just not being my jam it's just didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. It didn't feel the way I thought it was going to and it just wasn't as comfortable. So the first thing I wore there, I actually bought like these yoga sports bras from, it came in a two pack and they were from TJ Maxx or Marshalls, one of those. And they were super comfortable, really stretchy. They just had a little bit of padding 
and those were so comfortable. That's the one that I wore to the hospital. That's what I delivered in and they were super easy to pull down or lift up when I wanted to breastfeed him right after I had him. And then the next one I brought was an actual nursing bra with the clips that clips down on each side and they're very supportive but super stretchy at the same time. So they doesn't feel like, you know, they're pushing your boobs down or anything like that. That one is from Target. It's from the brand Auden. And I seriously, y'all, like I have so many of those bras. They are so comfortable and I've had them throughout almost all of my pregnancies. Yeah, I think I have. I've had them for every single pregnancy and um, postpartum with all of my babies. I actually wore them a lot during pregnancy just because they were so comfortable. And of course your boobs are growing as you go with your pregnancy. So it's really hard to have like a bra for every size that you're growing. I definitely recommend them and they come in your neutral colors, but then they also have some that come in different colors and different variations, the way that they look. If you want a more sporty sports bra look, or you just want that regular nursing bra, they have tons of options. So I use just the regular nursing bra. I have it in black and I have it in the nude color. I think I even had it in like this gray color. So I definitely love those. And I would recommend to bring two nursing bras. Again, just kind of like everything else. If one gets dirty or gets milk all over it or something happens to it and you don't want to be stuck with that bra for the next day and a half, then you have a backup. Always bring a backup. <laughs> it's always the best option. I know, you know, we're trying to stick to that minimal thing, but you, you don't want to be stuck with something and feeling gross that you have to wear this the rest of the time you're here. So always have a backup. And again, that's why I brought those two different kinds. I had the one, I just wore that one to the hospital. So I had that one for about a day. You know, I wore it there, I gave birth in it. I wore it that night. And then in the morning when I changed my clothes, I changed into my other nursing bra. Next thing for mama is a robe. The robe that I have is from Pink Blush. It is super cute. It has this floral print on it. It's got lace on it. And it's kind of like that jersey knit material. So it has stretch to it, but it's not super thick and fluffy. So it's not, it's not like you're gonna get overheated. It's not bulky, which is what I love. And it's actually called a delivery robe. I actually wore this once I got to the hospital and they wheeled me into delivery. Like I said earlier, I took my pants off. So I had nothing on down there and I had my little yoga sports bra on and then I put my robe on before they hooked me up to all the IVs and everything. And that way, if I needed to, I could always just cover up if somebody was to come in and I didn't want them to see anything. But then at the same time, it was super comfortable to wear. I didn't get blood or anything on it. I know a lot of people are like worried about blood and all that. All you have to do is just make sure that it's like lifted up on your back if you're laying down on your back. Now, if you know you're gonna be on all fours or facing forward or something when you're giving birth and maybe don't wear that. But I knew that I wasn't gonna be doing that. I like to, you know, the certain positions that I like to give birth in. So I knew that it wasn't gonna get all gross and dirty or anything like that. So I definitely recommend a robe. They're great to have. They're easy, you know, for nursing to just open it up and nurse your baby and then close it back up if you need to. They're nice if you get a little chilly in the room and you've got something to cover up with. And I just, I love them y'all. Ro robes are just great, especially going through postpartum as well when you get home from the hospital. So I definitely recommend to have one of those. You could get the delivery robe or maybe you just grab one that's like that thinner one. I mean, if you want that big fluffy one too, go right ahead. If that's the kind you already have at home and you don't wanna buy something new, Go right ahead mama that's good for you too for myself i was more comfortable in that delivery robe that was definitely more of um, a thinner version and again just really soft and comfy and of course i loved the floral print and the lace it just gives it a little extra and it turned out really cute because since i was wearing it after i had baby i was holding it my husband took a picture of the baby and i and just that picture it just it made it look so cute. So again, that's another reason why I recommend it because <laughs> they look good in pictures. <laughs> okay, next thing for mama is a button up sleep dress. Now you could totally go the shorts and top option, but I will say that I pretty much lived in the button down or button up sleep dresses um, or pajama dress, if, whatever you want to call those. I had a long sleeve one from Target. It was a pink and white stripe and I love it. It's still to this day, I will wear it. It's so comfortable and the material is so soft. It's stretchy. So it fits perfectly over a bump while you're pregnant. And then after you have baby, your belly's not going to go down all the way immediately. So you're still going to have some of that there. So if you need to button it up after you have baby, you can as well with all that stretchiness. It's just so comfortable and soft y'all. Now that pink and white one that I have, 
I know is is super a lot of y'all love that one from my last video and a lot of y'all have told me that you can't find it and that is because it is sold out <laughs> like I don't even think they make it anymore I found a similar version that I will link and then I will also link another one that is just plain black I think or it's plain gray but is the same type of material that I had my pink and white one in and the same brand and I love it y'all like it is the best postpartum breastfeeding after birth pajama that you could wear but I love it y'all I love it so really you only need to bring um, the robe and the PJ dress and that's really all you need while you're there other than your going home outfit last thing for mama is the belly band now this thing again y'all is a must-have especially for me this was like a must-have for me with all of my deliveries afterwards I had the hardest time you've got to remember like you just had a baby you've been pregnant for nine months your abs are not there and they are probably still separated they don't come back together for a little while if you don't have any abs when you stand up straight it is really hard to hold your upper body up your back will start straining so bad trying to hold your upper body up and it really really hurts not only that but i started noticing it felt like it was hard to breathe because i couldn't lift my body up to like open my lungs up to breathe and when i put that belly wrap on it was like it just so secure and just held me up i was able to walk around and i felt fine i had no muscle problems or strains i was able to breathe fine so that is the reason that i wear it i don't wear it to like snap back my body or anything like that your organs are going to go back on their own time whether you wear a belly band or not so either way i know people say that if you wear one for a while especially in the beginning it helps your tummy go back not really <laughs> it doesn't really if it does maybe like an inch quicker but not really so the main reason is just to it does help you know keep everything your posture good so that your organs can go back to size but that takes a long time so when you're in the hospital i loved that thing and i would wear it even when i was laying in the bed with him just to help my posture to keep my body up so that my lungs were there you know could breathe i could actually breathe while i was sitting down breastfeeding him and all of that stuff so a belly band is definitely a must for me and the one that I have, it's again linked down below, is from Amazon. It came in a three piece and I actually used two pieces of it. The third piece wraps around your hip area and I just didn't really need that. But if you do have a C-section, the hip area one might really be beneficial for you. And you guys can do your own research on which ones you think you should bring. But that one, I will say, has definitely been the best one I've ever used. Now we're going to go on to like extras and miscellaneous things. So the extras that I would bring are the Freedom Mom Perry bottle. They are going to give you like a little squirt bottle to clean yourself down there after postpartum. But I will say the Freedom Mom Perry bottle is way better. And so I brought, that's why I brought my own. It actually the spout actually comes down and then does a little it looks like a like an l so when you're squirting it makes it a lot easier to hit the spot that you need to clean rather than just a bottle with a little tip on it where you have to like maneuver your hand and your arm down there a certain way so the freedom mom peri bottle is definitely a great thing to have you don't really need to have it if you're okay with using the one they give you in the hospital like i said it just makes life a little easier when you're cleaning yourself to use that one. The Perry bottle does not come in the Freedom Mom postpartum kit. You do have to buy that separately. But again, y'all, I would totally buy that for sure. And especially it's great to have at home to use as well. Next thing is going to be nipple cream. You are gonna want that nipple cream and you're gonna wanna start it immediately. If you are breastfeeding and you know you're gonna breastfeed in the hospital right after baby eats, you want to put that nipple cream on you know clean your your nipples off and then put the nipple cream on and the one that i love to use is all natural it is organic and it is safe for baby to eat on you with that on there so a lot of the other ones you actually have to rub your that off of the nipple first before baby can feed and that just seems like backwards to me so you put the nipple cream on so that your nipples don't hurt but then you have to rub it off for your baby to eat like that doesn't make any sense to me you're just irritating it more so the one that i have been using for years and years and years is amazing the texture is so nice and smooth and it really like y'all this stuff is awesome it helped me so so much 
and in the hospital your nipples may not hurt that bad but if you don't start it immediately they will get worse really quick and by the time you get home and you really start getting in that groove of breastfeeding your nipples are just going to start getting raw so that's why i say use it in the hospital and like i said the, the one that i have linked down below that i used you do not have to wipe it off when baby's ready to feed again which makes life easier as well because then you don't have to think about oh crap i have to wipe this off first before baby eats every single time the next thing is going to be belly cream i know that you've been putting on belly cream your whole time you've been pregnant you know trying to keep those stretch marks away and make sure that you're hydrating your skin as much and now that baby is out of your belly and your belly's starting to deflate you still need to put those creams on because your stomach and that skin is stretched out and it wants to go back. And the only way that that elasticity can stay and start to go right back like a rubber band needs to have that moisture. So don't forget to keep putting those creams on your tummy. Now the same company that makes the nipple cream that I use also makes a stretch mark and belly cream and or balm I guess you would call it because it's definitely more like it's almost like a coconut oil texture where when it's not when it's cooled it feels kind of hard and so I would dig my nail in there I would put some in my hand and warm it up with my hand and then that it gets kind of like that oily feeling and rub it all over my stomach and it felt so good now you don't have to use that one if you don't want to if you just want to use like Palmer's or even just a regular lotion body lotion then I would bring that and just make sure that you're putting that lotion on whenever you feel like you, you're itchy. Um, you know, obviously if you take a shower there, put it on right after the shower, just to make sure that you're giving your body and your skin that moisture that it needs to make everything go back. Next thing that I would bring are snacks. And this is definitely a great one because you're gonna be hungry all the time. For one, your body's trying to produce milk for your baby, so your body's burning calories for that, which makes you hungry. You just gave birth, so you're exhausted. It took all your energy, so you're gonna be hungry and you need to replenish your body. And yes, I actually loved the food at the hospital. I ate there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The only meal I didn't eat there was right after baby. It's like my reward for having a baby. <laughs> For giving birth, my favorite thing was to have my husband. He would usually go and pick up food from Culver's or I always wanted like Culver's burgers and custard or it was Chick-fil-A. So with baby boy, I did opt for Chick-fil-A and so he went out and got me Chick-fil-A and some waffle fries. And what's crazy y'all is when I had baby boy, they had just let up the uh, rule that dad couldn't leave and then come back it was just like crazy that that happened for us i couldn't believe it because like the week before they had been telling people they couldn't leave so i was so grateful now either way you can get your food like if you're still if you give birth soon and your hospital is still not allowing people to come in and out whenever they want or to have visitors you can actually order from a food delivery a place and have them deliver it to the hospital you just have to have your husband go down and grab it from the delivery person at the door. But you can do that option and I definitely loved Chick-fil-A this last time. It was amazing to have right after giving birth. But other than that, you're gonna be hungry all the time and unless you wanna pay extra money to eat, you know, get snacks here and there from the hospital's cafeteria, you're gonna wanna bring some snacks. So I brought, let's see, I brought like energy bars, I brought pro protein bars, I brought my lactation cookies and brownies, I brought packages of like chips and crackers that I liked. Try to stick with stuff that's more dry foods. You don't want to bring something that needs to be refrigerated because they're probably not going to have a refrigerator in your room. They do have like a separate room that has like ice and stuff in it. Usually at least they do at my hospital, but I didn't feel comfortable like leaving my food <laughs> in the fridge in there. I don't know, I just thought that was weird. So I wouldn't bring anything that you know needs to be refrigerated or cold. So just try to think up some things and put a quite a bit of them. Actually, I, I didn't even put this on the list, but if you don't already have these, I would definitely buy some packing cubes for like suitcases. And obviously this is mainly for people that travel. I bought mine on Amazon and it came in like a four pack of little cubes, like two big ones, two like medium size. And then I had like a bag and something else, but I used the smaller size one. It has a zipper on it to fill up with all of my snacks that I was bringing with me. And that way I could just pull that bag out, unzip it, and then grab a couple things here and there. I think I even brought like peanut butter Ritz crackers, you know, those little ones in there in the packages. 
those are really nice <laughs> to have just make sure that you figure out the stuff that you want and just put a ton of it in there it's better to have too much then not enough and you ate through all your snacks and you're there for another day and you're like dang it now i'm starving you know those midnight feedings when everything is dark the hospital is dark because everybody's sleeping and you're up feeding your baby and you're exhausted but you're so hungry and the cafeteria is not open you got your snacks there to eat so i definitely recommend bringing as many snacks as you can now again this is for breastfeeding mamas if you know you are going to be breastfeeding or maybe you're just going to be pumping exclusively I would immediately start your lactation drops, your lactation cookies, um, your lactation lemonade, whatever is the stuff that you know you're gonna wanna be taking to just help your body produce that milk and maybe keep that milk supply going. Maybe you wanna boost it right away. Um, any of those kinds of things, I would just start taking them immediately. So I brought them with me to the hospital. I had my Milky Mama drops, which uh, Milky Mama is the company and they have these little herbal supplement droppers, bottles with a little dropper in it and you drop some under your tongue every day. I brought that with me. I had my lactation cookies with me. And then I also brought my new mama drink from I Am Nurtured. That drink, y'all, is amazing because not only is it gonna help you with lactation, but it also helps you to heal faster. It gets all those nutrients and everything that you need back into your body to help you heal. It has all your vitamins in there, so you don't have to take your prenatal anymore, but you still wanna get those vitamins in your body after you've had your baby. So you've got that, it helps with sleep, it helps with energy, just all around, especially it helps with postpartum depression too. So if you're getting all of that in your body, as quickly as possible after you having a baby, it's definitely gonna help you in the long run of your postpartum. So I definitely recommend that bag. The other thing is liquid IV would be great too because since you're starting breastfeeding, you're gonna be so dang thirsty all the time. And liquid IV actually helps triple the hydration that you're getting from just that bottle of water or cup of water that you're drinking. And when you're breastfeeding, that is very beneficial. So you don't have to bring liquid IV to the hospital if you don't want to, but that is a little tip for you that if you are gonna drink your new mama, you could mix the new mama and the liquid IV together in your water just to give you that extra. You've got your extra hydration, you've got all your vitamins and minerals, you're good to go. Those things are definitely great to have. Next is gonna be toiletries, of course. If you, you know, for one, you're gonna wanna bring your toothbrush and your toothpaste, of course your lotions. And then if you know you're probably gonna take a shower while you're there, you know, get yourself a little travel size shampoo and conditioner, body wash, you know, I don't know if you need the Q-tips for your ears, you wanna bring your brush or a hair tie, hair dryer, any of that kind of stuff. You know, figure out what are the things that you know you're gonna want while you're there and make that list for yourself and then put those in your bag. Okay, these next ones are optional. These are things that I wanted to talk about and make sure that I give you all these ideas, but they're not necessarily something that you have to have in your bag. This is up to you. So number one is gonna be, you know, bringing your own cup and straw. So if you like, you know, your big Yeti tumbler cup and you've got the lid and the straw in there and that's your favorite thing to drink out of, I would bring that with you. I brought mine with me so I could drink my water and constantly replenish my water and have that big jug to just suck down the whole time I was there. There. but the hospital will give you if you don't already have a cup they will give you one of their big jugs um, with their hospital name on it and it comes with a straw and everything so that's why this is optional because you don't actually need to bring it they will have one there for you to drink out of and they will ask you all the time do you need more water and they'll constantly be trying to replenish your water in that big jug now if you don't want to drink out of that and you want to have your own cute little cup then bring your own cute little cup. I totally did it and I loved it, you know, keeping my water nice icy cold in there and it looks really cute too. <laughs> so that's up to you. Next thing is a pillow and a blanket. For me, this was a must have, but again, it's up to you. Some people don't really care. They're totally fine with the, plank the blankets and the pillows that were already on um, the bed at the hospital. But for me, myself, I liked having that extra, the extra plushness of my pillows. And then I brought an extra blanket just in case I get a little cold. The other reason that's a great thing to bring is for daddy because they don't really give anything to daddy. <laughs> They might give him like a sheet or a blanket to just lay on the little sofa that's in the room for him to sleep on. But other than that, they're probably not gonna give him much. So if you don't end up using the, the pillows and the blankets, it's probably a good idea for daddy to bring it for himself if he's gonna sleep there. You know, if it's your first baby and you know obviously he's gonna stay there the whole time, then he's probably gonna need some blankets and some pillows. Next is fiber choice gummies. This is something that 
I've talked about in almost all of my like videos about pregnancy and postpartum. Fiber Choice gummies are great for constipation and I ate them all throughout my pregnancy because pregnancy brings on constipation. And then of course, once you have baby, if you rip down there and you have stitches, going number two can be a little scary. And especially if you're constipated, then it's even scarier because you're like, well, crap, now it's been building up in there and I gotta go and what am I gonna do? You know, it's a lot. So they will give you stool softeners right after you have your baby when they give you you know whether it's pain medicine or anything else um ibuprofen they will give you stool softeners with that as well to help you um so you don't need to bring your own stool softeners but i was already taking the fiber choice gummies so i just put them in my bag and kept taking them just to make sure that i could keep my body regulated and um you know, be able to go number two and not be too worried about it. So again, that's just optional for you. If you feel like it would be great to have that just as extra help, then that's awesome. Plus, you know, your body needs fiber anyways. That's always good for you. Um, but if you're not, then leave those at home and keep them for when you get home. Next thing are photo props. So if you know that you're gonna be taking baby's first photo in the hospital and you want the little wooden sign with their name on it or maybe it's a letter board or a blanket or a picture, like a frame, I don't know, anything like that that you know you bought specifically for the hospital picture, you know, they're swaddled up with their little bow or their beanie on their head and they're laying them down on the bed and you take that cute little picture with their name tag or whatever it is, then make sure that you pack that as well and put that on your checklist so that you don't forget. I didn't bring anything for that. Uh, we didn't, I, I don't think I've ever done that with any of my kids, but I've seen the tons of cute pictures of people that have done that and they look so cute. So if that's, if you are one of those mamas that wants to do that, don't forget to put that in your bag. All right, now we're gonna go to last minute items. The only thing I have on my last minute item is chargers, laptops, any kind of electronics that you know you're gonna wanna bring, whether it's a camera, obviously you need your chargers for your phone, um, maybe even get like an extra long charger because usually the plugs, like if you're sitting in the hospital bed with your baby, the plugs are not like right next to you. They're kind of far back behind you or to this side. So having like a, an extra long charger cord is great to have. So that would be great to pack. And obviously if you use it at home, then you need to pack that last minute. So don't forget that. And then if you are like me and you vlog it or you want your husband to video some of it for family memories, don't forget your camera. Of course you need a charger for that, you know, extra batteries, that kind of stuff. Um, the bag for it. And then maybe you bring a laptop because you wanna be able to watch movies there while you're sitting around. We did that a couple times and my husband actually hooked up the laptop to the TV so that I could watch on the TV any kind of like, um, we like streamed, you know, different movies and videos that he had downloaded. Now, nowadays, I feel like that just sounds so old. I didn't have that, I didn't have my babies a long time ago, but now we have all these streaming apps so we could pretty much do that on your phone. But if you do wanna watch it on the laptop or on the TV, then don't forget that. All right, y'all, that concludes my minimalist hospital bag packing list for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to help you out in this area and that maybe I gave you some ideas of things that you didn't think of yet. Again, y'all, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions on this packing list or if you need different options of things that I have linked down below, you can totally ask me in the comments and I will try to find you um, as much as I can and help you out in that area. I know, again, like I said, it can be overwhelming and there can be a lot of choices so if you need some help in that area and maybe some of the stuff I've linked you've said well I like this but I want it a little differently or I'm looking for something more like that I will totally help you out because I know that this can be a lot <laughs> so I'm always here to help you can always ask me no matter what this list is a great way to start your hospital packing bag again like I said if you are a minimalist mama and you do not want to bring all that extra stuff this list is perfect for you. Again, y'all, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you loved it and you love this kind of content and wanna see it keep on coming to you. And make sure you subscribe if you're new because I would love to have you here in the Stoltard Mama family. Come be a part of this wonderful family here on the internet. And I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.